All right, coming back for assignment three, continuing to work on our animation. So I'm going to go right to assignments and jump right to it. And as we have it, we were just talking about group presentations. We were talking about digital honor students doing mentorship presentations. Under assignments, I have a link to a past mentorship presentation on using Photopea to make a GIF. Because sometimes it's hard to just see, see it from me as a, a demo. So this is a past student that's reflected on it for a while and then showed how they do it, how they keep it in mind. So this is showing them making their rough storyboard like we talked about last class. And then actually shows them animating, making an animatic of their rough storyboard. And that's because in order to animate, which we'll be doing today, I'll, I'll run an animation test we are going to bring it into this external program and it's called easygift.com because Photopea does not have the, the same animation tools that Photoshop has within it, but we can imitate those with this other program. So just remember that that mentorship presentation is there under assignments and all these resources that are under assignments are just kind of additional exploration of the topic for more depth. The next one we'll be going into is logo design and creation. But let's go to where we post our GIF animation. I have my rough storyboard here. I'm going to open up what I created last class, I have organized into my assignment three folder. And I'm always going to open up my storyboard or if you have it just hand drawn, you can just keep it close to you so you can always refer to it. And then I have two files. I have an assets file, which I mark as green, and a stage file, which I mark as blue. These are both PSD files. They are both, because this is a question I always get from students, makes sense. They are both this format, eight inches by eight inches, so eight inches square at a resolution of 150 pixels per inch. So if you're starting fresh with your assets file, you want to make it 8 inches by 8 inches at 150. Let me open up PhotoP and not have a bunch of other programs open, especially not Photoshop. And then I'm just going to open up first my assets, and then I'm going to open up my stage. So I say file open. You can have two things open in Photoshop. Assignment three, my stage, my blue file. Now they look almost identical, but they're side by side. And that's important because my assets is where I have tons of layers that set up all the different things I want to do in my animation. My stage is only finished frames. And this way I can even like see what I've done so far. So, so far I've gone through the first three panels of my animation. Or the first three frames of my storyboard, but that's actually taken 10 panels. So I'm going to start this way, then let the eyes appear, and then I start moving the eyes, and then the head appears. So yeah, I have 11 frames. And then this fish starts swimming across, and the eyes keep following. So all that's good. I can hit Command S at any time to save them right where I open them from, which is in my folder. So notice when I save, I lose the blue dot. So that's why I like to always reassert it so I can be assured that it's saved. And so I'm actually going to drag those over to here so I can see them. The other thing you want to make sure you can see is your history. This is important for this process. Remember, this is our final kind of compositing project. So understanding layers and seeing what you're doing with them and organizing them is a big part of it. So this is the last frame I made. And that is about right here on my storyboard. So now I need the fish to continue moving on and his eyes to follow it out. I still haven't gotten to the transformation yet. That kind of comes at the end. I'm building up to it. So here I've already built this frame. I just haven't brought it over yet. 
the eyes have moved, the fish is out. So now how do I bring this group of layers and move it onto my stage? First, I need to flatten them all together. And there's a bunch of ways you can do this, but the way I'm using this semester, because it's just the most direct, is to go to Layer, Flatten Image, which is really scary because it just gets rid of all of your, your assets. But then you say Select All, then you say Edit, Copy, and that puts it onto the, what's it called? <laughs> the clipboard? Yeah, that's what it's called. Puts it onto the clipboard, just in the memory of the computer. It's now outside of Photopea. So now I go, because I'm still in my assets file, I go before I flatten the image. Whatever command you had before flatten image, go back to that in your history. And then you'll have all your layers back. And then I go to my stage, and then I can say edit paste. And it will take the thing from the clipboard, and it will paste it in as a new layer. And then I can hit Command S and save it. What you don't want to do is flatten it and then save it, <laughs> right? You don't want to lose all of your assets. So you're only flattening it in that moment when you want to grab all those images into one frame. And as soon as you flatten it, you select it all, you copy it, and then you unflatten it. You go in your history before you flattened it. And then you go over to your stage and you paste that in. So you can document all of your frames. The whole idea of this, even though it's arduous, is it really teaches you the basics of frame-by-frame -frame animation. And anytime you make a mistake, you have all the components that built it in your assets file, which is why we make so many duplicates. So for instance, now the fish is going to leave entirely. So I can just turn this one off. But now another fish is going to come in. So I'm going to bring a new asset in, and this time I'm going to use this guy, this big colorful fish. Before I can use him, I need to clean him up. I need to rasterize him. I need to use my compositing skills. I'm going to take the tolerance down here, maybe make it about 12. Up. There we go. Then I'm going to delete. That background, I don't want a shadow under it, so I'm just going to use my lasso. Remember, GIFs are limited to only 256 colors, and they're at screen resolution. So I'm going to clean it up, but I don't need it to be perfect. Get rid of that little ghost trail around it. Okay, now I'm going to do Option Command T. That is the shortcut within Photopea on a Chrome browser for Free Transform. Otherwise, you can go to Edit Free Transform, and it will actually show you that shortcut. Option Command T. I don't like three key shortcuts usually, but it used to just be Control T, but they've changed it. So now, Option Command T. So now I think I want this fish to appear this way. And even before I make my frames, I can just set up a movement cycle. So I can just do Command J, duplicate it, and then use my Move tool and move it in. And this fish can move at any kind of speed I want. And I can see there's a little bit of a debris tag there. It's going to bug me. So I'm going to get rid of it. Whoops. Ooh, this, this fish is called AI generated. That's the file from Pixabay. So that's interesting. Pixabay actually asks you now if what you are uploading is AI generated or not. It's an interesting question. And if it's only AI generated, if you, if a human being didn't work on it at all, except just to, to move it onto the computer and to put it up to Pixabay, then it actually, at least under current legal precedent, can't be copyrighted. It's considered basically an act of God or an act of a machine rather than an entity that's allowed to copyright. 
So that's why concept artists now just can't use copy, use AI just as is. Not only because it's not the best work or the best thing to do, but because the studio can't own the rights to something that's only AI generated. It needs to be linked with a, an author. And in the new writer's contracts, they've made that clear that AI content needs to always be linked with a human author. And that human author will always get royalties. So it's, it's interesting, all this stuff that's being worked out. Anyway, I'm going to continue this fish now. I've cleaned it up a little bit. And it's going to start moving off like this. And this way I can show the whole trajectory. And then at that point, I want to have my, my, um, my cat eat it. So... Because I'm working towards an end result, it's kind of it's the run up to my transformation. You need to design a lot of these things backwards. So I need to see what it looks like when the cat actually opens its mouth to eat this fish. I need to know where the position is in order to know when to do it in my animation. So I'm going to build that. So far, I've only been animating the cat's eyes. But now I'm actually going to change the cat. So make a duplicate of it, just in my assets. There we go. And now I wanted to do the, the weird kind of Terry Gilliam thing where I'm going to just cut the cat's head open. I want to do it below the whiskers. So I want to make sure I can see it clearly. So I'll actually just use the rectangular marquee tool. I'll just cut the cat right there. And then what I'm going to do to make this an asset that I can manipulate is I'm going to hit Command X. Command X is different than Command J. Command J would duplicate that selection, but it would also just leave it in place on this layer. Command X will look like it's deleting it, it's a, an edit command called cut, but it saves whatever I cut onto the clipboard. So then if I hit edit paste, it will paste it back in. And I just have to take its opacity back down to 75 to match. And now I can option command T or edit free transform. Come on. There we go. Just this, and I can rotate it. Now, I think what I actually want to do is leave that there, because the fish is going to be here. Come on, photo P. There we go. And I think I want to tilt the top half of the head. Now remember, these are all duplicates, so you can always recreate. So I'm going to do Option Command T, and I'm going to tilt the top half of the head up. <laughs> It'd be hilarious, yeah, if the if the eyes don't move. But now the eyes are there, right? So what do I need to do? I need to plot eyes, and I'm going to just put them in the center position, and then I'm going to duplicate that. and duplicate the uh, highlights on top, and then select all three of those. This is all the thinking you have to do for transformations. And now with all three of those selected, I can go to Layer, Merge those three layers together. So that now I have it all in one place. So if I turn it off, it should really be off. Come on. I'll move it down here. There we go. Which then allows me to finally control or option command T, not control T, and tilt it up. 
where it's going to now 